I just knew from a young age that being a Marine is what I wanted. Carry on with the legacy of my family of being a United States Marine. And, uh, that became very important to me. Beginning of my senior year, I'd already made up my mind and to uh, hopefully carry on the legacy. So I did, third generation Marine. Went to Kuwait, was in Kuwait for it was a day and a half, two days. Left Kuwait, went into Iraq, landed in the combat zone with Al-Assad, started our 48 hour brief. My guys were on a react mission. My vehicle hit a, uh, it was a triple stack tank mine. And it was pressure plate ignited. So as soon as the front left tire of the Hummer hit it, it blew and it blew up pretty much right underneath me. And uh, it blew me out of the Hummer. And my buddy Woods, who's also one of my gunners, and he was, I could hear him yelling my name and uh, because I never lost consciousness and everyone just shot. I remember everything. And I could hear Woods yelling for me. He was yelling my last name, shake, shake, shake. And I couldn't respond, I couldn't breathe. Both my lungs just collapsed. I couldn't breathe, couldn't move because everything was broken or shattered except for my right arm. So I was trying to pull myself back to the Hummer, but I was just scooping sand, not going anywhere. And I knew Woods was really terrified when he totally broke Marine Corps military wide, I guess, protocol, said my first name out loud and screamed it, just Jacob. And I knew, oh God, he thinks he thinks I'm gone. I remember raising my arm up and being able to see the daylight like break through my arm because there was just a giant hole in my arm and then seeing my left part of my hand hanging off and my leg flopping around. It was just chaos and panic and blood and bones and it was, it was a bad day. I think they remember him telling me that it was 42 minutes to the second that it, it took a, the uh, medevac to come get me. And I was awake and alert and aware for all 42 minutes. By far the longest 42 minutes of, of my life. They were taking me off the Hummer to go load me on the Blackhawk. I remember the sheet. Why well, is it weird? I remember this. The sheep blowing up and like the sand getting in my wounds from underneath the bandages and the bandages blowing around from the vortex of the bird. I just remember thinking like, just when you think there's no way that any of this could get any more painful. And I just remember making a deal with God saying, hey, you know, just don't let my guys watch me die. That's all I ask. Let the bird get here. As soon as the bird takes off, you, you know, you can have me. Just don't let my guys watch me die. That's all I'm asking. Lieutenant who was flying the bird said, uh, I think he came back and told me 12 minutes. So I was like, 12 minutes, I can do this. I can do this 12 minutes. And uh, the bird lands there in Balad which is a field hospital um, near Baghdad. So I got the satellite phone, called my dad, and he said, hey Bubba, well, how, you, how you doing? I said, I'm not good, you know, they, they got me. He said, what do you mean they got you? I said, you know, they got me, dad, I got hit. They had to take my right foot. And I remember him, <clears throat> just the silence. And uh, so I went from, Lied to Germany, to uh, Bethesda, Maryland. The poor guy that was pushing me in the gurney. Every time this guy would hit, just a regular little bump that would be that would separate panels of concrete. It just would feel like I was getting blown up all over again. I don't know why, but it was incredibly, incredibly painful. Everyone was trying to talk to me, and I just didn't want to. I just wanted silence because I was so focused on getting through the pain. <clears throat> and when he pushed me onto the elevator, that was the big bump. And I looked up, 
the only thing that worked was my right arm, and I pointed at him. I said, next time you hit a big bump like that, I'm gonna take you out. And I remember my dad laughing and snickering to himself when he looked at everybody else, the rest of my family, he said, he's gonna be all right. And uh, that was kind of the beginning of you know my true war, which was making it through this hell that is recovering from a IED explosion. And uh, that was a day by day process that went on for <clears throat> I guess a year and a half. And then 46 operations later, 23 blood transfusions later, at least I'm still here. I'm United States Marine Corporal Jacob Schick. And I'm carrying Sergeant Tyler's Eagle. Who are you carrying?